Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're gonna to talk about Reaper video tools from the community. This video is sponsored by Skillshare and we're gonna talk about them a little bit later on. So in this video, we're going to have a roundup of various scripts and plugin presets for video making in Reaper. And first up is this great kaleidoscope effect from WWW Maze. This one came out in 2018. It's a really excellent uh, kaleidoscope script. I've used it in a couple videos, at least one video, and uh, but I don't have it currently installed. So that gives us an opportunity to uh, show you how to actually install it. So uh, here's our test footage. And we're going to add in a video processor on this item. We're just going up to the all plugins button and going to video processor and adding that. And I've copied all of the text from this uh, forum post here, and we're going to paste it in. We'll press command S to actually save this into the video processor. And instantly we can see that the kaleidoscope effect is happening there. If we hit the preview control here, we can see the triangle shape and we can position that. We can choose the spot that's going to uh, be kind of mirrored and flipped and all that. Uh, we can choose the size of it. We can rotate it. We can scale it. Uh, we need to turn off preview before we scale it. But yeah, with a little bit of automation, you can get some really cool effects. And we'll change the length. So I think you can do some really interesting effects with this. Before when we saved this code into the video processor, it doesn't actually keep it in um, anything other than this project. If we want to save it, we hit the plus button in the video processor plugin window, and we go to save preset, give it a name like kaleidoscope, and hit OK. And now it will appear at the bottom of this list. Next up is another great preset from WWW Maze, and this is the Wave Morph. And this is kind of like a a ripple effect. And with really subtle settings, this can be very cool. So again, we're just gonna copy and then paste and then save to get the code into the video processor. And we can reset to the default settings by uh, going to the preset menu and hitting reset. And that's just the same as double clicking each of the knobs. But there we go, we can play this. And this, the ripple effect doesn't, isn't continuous. You would need to actually automate the phase control. And we can change the amount. We can change the function, which does different shapes. And yeah, you can get some really neat effects with this. So sort of like a sawtooth shape, square shape, reversed. So this could be an interesting transition. We can uh, increase the amount of, of uh, ripples here. But if you do really, really subtle effects, so change the amount to like, I don't know, 0 0.001, and just automate the phase, you can get some really kind of subtle, interesting effects. Moving on to the next one, this is timecode overlay video effects. This one came out all the way back in 2016. Um, in the comments of this thread, I, I saw that it does have some issues with drop frame footage, but you should be okay. It's very useful uh, just to display the timecode. So if we put this into the video processor on an item and reset, and now we've got the time code um, at the cursor position within the item. And if we move this over, so it's starting at 40 seconds, the time code is still going to 
reflect the the source time code. If we alt drag this over to the track effects now, uh, it's now using the project time code. And in here we could do other things like we could change the font if we wanted. We can change the height, the position, uh, both X and Y. We can add a border or change the border size. We can change the brightness, uh, the alpha. We can change the, the background brightness if we want a white box with black text. We can easily do that. Um, we can also offset this so that let's say 40 seconds into the project is actually one hour and 40 seconds. Hours offset, minutes, seconds, and frames offsets. This next one is from a user named Kite, and it overlays a chord grid for like electric guitar um, on the video. So this is an insanely detailed and uh, complicated script, and I'm very impressed by his work on this. So this puts a chord chart on your video and we can do things like change the root note. So now it's an E major, we could change the type to a seventh chord. You can use, choose whether we're using flats or not. Change the position with X and Y. We can change the font size. We can change the border size. Change the amount of space between the name and the chord. And then we can adjust the actual string spacing, uh, the finger spot size, all this kind of stuff. If you need to overlay chords in a video, this is pretty much going to be the easiest way to do it. So that's it for video processor uh, scripting. Next is video thumbnail scripts. So if you have a video in Reaper and you want to overlay uh, thumbnails in the timeline, you can now do that uh, using the scripts from uh, Julian Sater. So if I go to the actions list after you install it and search for thumbnail, got create thumbnail items for in selected track for selected video items. Just gonna double click this to run that and select the folder. Uh, this is an unsaved folder, so we're just going to uh, put it in Reaper Media and okay. And we can choose things like the size, uh, thumbnail height in 100 pixels and the interval every half second. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, sure. Half second. And we get this console output and it's just um, created 36 thumbnail items. So if we actually zoom in here pretty close, we can see um, out every frame we've got a, a thumbnail image. If you hit edit on any of these, it gives you a lot more information, uh, instructions and description. The next script is called video scene detection. This comes from Mr. Limbic who creates uh, the Vordio app and this will be in repack. So uh, all the instructions and everything are in here. But once you run that, uh, and I'm not gonna run it here because it actually takes, it can take a, quite a while to actually process this. So you bring in a video and then you run the script and it will create a, a new track with different items to show your, um, your scene changes. And if we actually go to the folder where this is, you'll have this text file, uh, which shows where those cuts have taken place. This is all done with FF Probe, which is part of FFmpeg. And um, normally when we install FFmpeg, we use the shared build. This time we actually use the static build and we put it into the user folder. And so in the Reaper folder under user plugins, you have to put in FFmpeg and FFplay, ffprobe.exe or the equivalent on Mac, which it should just be the same file names, but without an extension. Anyway, so we've got different scenes here and you can, um, if you scrub through, you can kind of see the different, uh, there's a cut on each of these, um, these video clips. So whenever there's a major kind of scene transition in this 
example, it's wherever I've added in a black screen with the titles. Uh, so this is a pretty helpful thing. It's not 100% reliable. So for example, um, it didn't detect a cut here when I go from my intro, um, the cold open to the intro, uh, but it did detect the, the change from that intro scene into Talking Head again. I think it's a pretty helpful script, even if it's not 100% reliable. Moving on, this is an entirely different sort of thing. This is actually a Windows extension um, to do different kinds of uh, conversion and extraction uh, through FFmpeg, but just from the Windows context menu. So I'll show you what this actually looks like on a video project. So let's say I go to the recent contact template video and I take my, uh, my MP4, which comes out of OBS. If I right click it, I get all of these options in here. So quite a lot of options. I actually just updated this this morning um, after I made some suggestions to um, the creator, Sonic Axiom, yesterday, and uh, he implemented them right away. So we've got a convert audio to wave. So I would do that for my main um, audio track or um, extract audio M4A audio second stream. And that gets me my uh, the output of Reaper or whatever I'm recording from OVS. And I think somewhere in here there was a mono one, but I might be wrong. This context menu actually changes depending on the type of file that you are uh, looking at here. So on MP4, you get all these options, but if you're looking at a WAV file, then you get a bunch of different options. You can convert the formats, you can convert um, the bit depth, you can change to FLAC, you can extract just the left channel, that sort of thing. So there is a lot of different things here, uh, and this saves a ton of time. So, uh, and it even puts in the, the name of the format or whatever conversion it used into there. So I've only been using this for a little while, and uh, there's all kinds of new stuff since I last looked at this last night. Um, but even then, it's saving me a ton of time. I recently recommended FFmpeg Batch AV Converter. Um, this is even faster and covers pretty much all the same things they would do if you're making videos using OBS and then editing in Reaper. Unfortunately, this one is Windows only. Um, I'd love to have this on Mac, but there are other ways of doing FFmpeg conversions, drag and drop tools and things like that on Win on Mac uh, that I've already have set up. So I'm bringing this one up because it's made by a Reaper user and I find it super helpful for making videos. All the links to everything I talked about will be in the description below and in the blog post. Instructions for installing these scripts will actually be in each individual forum post. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes on art, design, productivity, and more. There's even classes on Reaper here. Lately, I've been watching Productivity Masterclass, The Pilot, The Plane, and The Engineer from Ali Abdal. He's a YouTuber, he's also a doctor. Uh, he's got um, a lot of really interesting thoughts on productivity and um, time management, all the, these sorts of things. Really excellent stuff, really kind of uh, energetic and motivating and a really fun class to go through. There's also a really great beginner Reaper class from Brian Knapp. If you're new to Reaper and you wanna get into this uh, in about an hour, I would recommend checking this out. Skillshare has classes on all topics and for all skill levels. So whether you're experienced or just completely new, not even sure if you're interested in the topic or if you want to pursue that as uh, a hobby or part of your career, you can just dive into this really easily and it's really focused on learning. There's no ads um, and there's, you know, there's no algorithm to compete with your attention. So use the link in the description to try a free Skillshare premium membership. If you want to stay on for a full year, it's only about $10 a month. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So there you go, guys. A bunch of really great scripts and uh, video processor presets and utilities for Reaper to help you make videos. I really enjoy using these, and uh, some of these deserve to be part of Reaper built in. And uh, it's, it's awesome that these are all shared by the community. 
Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.